Okay, good afternoon everyone. So, eto na tayo. Finally, naayos na natin yung ating webinar. Yesterday, we had some te technical difficulties, but right now, ready, ready na po lahat. I'm here today with one of the class presidents of our grade 12 STEM students, Mr. Charles Palamig. Hello. So, hello sa ating mga viewers. Hello, uh, hello Natasha. Hello, LJ. Also to Mr. Bugarin of STEM 206. Ngayon, let's start now with our webinar series. So, today we will be talking about in this session on biology. Medyo nagkaroon lang tayo ng um, konting abirya sa schedule because of some power interruptions earlier. So, what will happen is biology muna po tayo. Then, after nito ang physics. Yesterday, engineering ang pinag-usapan natin, di ba Charles? Kumusta naman yes. sa iyo yung kumusta naman sa iyo yung ano talk, talk natin on engineering yesterday. Uh, po ano po yung talk natin yesterday is uh, very good as in uh, kasi ako po uh, nag uh, iisip pa ako about engineering and hindi ko pa po na-imagine yung sarili ko in that field. And with the use of our career talk uh, yesterday, uh, na-imagine ko po yung sarili ko na ay parang pwede pala ako sa ano na to, sa career na to. So, parang may epekto po siya sa aming mga students uh, when okay. it comes to decision making. Ah, okay. So, that's good actually. So, ganito, before we start, I would like to begin with an opening prayer. So, let's give ourselves a moment of silence for all that has been Thank you, God. And for all that will be. Yes, God. Okay. So, thank you for that short prayer and participation with us. So, ganito. Good afternoon pala po, Ma'am Queenie. Ma'am Queenie is, an, is in our comment section ang, nag, ang pinakamaganda mong advisor, Charles. Batiin naman natin ang iyong nanay. Ma'am Queenie, hello, hello po. po. Hi, Ma'am. Oh, hello po, Ma'am. <laughs> So, ang dami natin, ang dami natin mga viewers na actually, oh. So, hello po kay Ryan, kay, Ri, kay Raya, kay Gab, kay hello, Yula. Guys. Hello, hello. Hindi ko kayo mamimension lahat-lahat ngayon. Pero, welcome po sa ating webinar. So, Charles, anong inex kahapon natuwa ka sa talk natin? So, ngayon, ano kaya, ano in Sir, may na nawala kami ng sound. Hello po. So ayun guys, medyo nagkakaroon ng internet interruption si Sir Fandino. So sa naintindihan ko at sa narinig ko, narinig ko na may expectation kung ano daw yung expectation dito sa webinar natin today. So, I'm expecting uh, dagdag na knowledge ulit. Dahil may question and answer portion na naman tayong magaganap and may mga studyante na namang magsiswitch or may pagbabago, ganyan. Dahil hindi natin yun may iwasan. Gusto nyo yun? Okay. Was, Ngayon, that... actually, sorry na wala ako kanina. <laughs> Yes. So, ito na naman, wala na naman ng kuryente. <laughs> happy, happy ang init ngayon sa Earth. Okay. Yes. So, yun ito. Pinusubukan ko lang munang ibalik yung, ano, kahit pa paano, i-hotspot ko na lang yung phone ko sa presentation para naman, andito kasi yung presentation ating speaker. So, wait na lang tayo. Ngayon. Ayan, maliwanag na naman ulit ang buhay. <laughs> So, wait lang natin mag-loading ngayon. Sure. So, pag-usapan natin yung speaker natin. Actually, itong speaker natin is matagal ko, nang siyang, matagal ko na siyang kakilala ever since college. Ngayon, I'm sure very, magiging very relatable sa mga students natin to kasi everyone is struggling especially with the pandemic. Tapos sabihin nila, yeah. Sir, hindi naman po ganun kataas ang grades ko. Hindi rin naman po ganun kagaling yung performance ko sa academics. Paano po kaya ako makakapasok sa college? So may mga ganun kasing incidents na baka mahiya naman yung mga bata, di ba? 
Yeah. Pero I'm hopeful na after the session is maayos yung mindset natin na hindi ka hindi kaya. Pero kahit na mahirap, kakayanin. Yun saan yung magiging baon natin. Okay? Yes. So, ikaw, Charles, bukod sa ano, sa, di ba sabi mo sa akin, engineering talaga ang first choice mo. So, bukod sa engineering, ano pa ang magiging next choice mo? Align pa ba sa STEM? Uh, yung next, yes po, sir. Align po siya, ano, be a uh, applied mathematics po, sir. Uh, okay. Nagpa-plan po yeah. ako na Yes, nagpa-plan po ako na after ko tapos ng applied mathematics na course na ano na maging professor and maging statistician. Ay, palaban. Maganda magandang yes, sir, opportunity tapa. yan kasi, kasi lahat po ay talagang makikinabang diyan sa ganyang ano, tawag, tawag mo rito ganyang field. Especially sa statistics ngayon pa nga lang sa research, 'di ba? Naghahanap kayo yung yes, statistician. Po. So, ayan. Ito na, naayos na natin ang ating PowerPoint presentation. May kuryente na uli. Thank you, Lord. So, gumana, pala, gumana yung prayer natin kanina, Charles. Yes, true, sir. May liwanag okay. ang buhay. Charat. <laughs> so, batiin muna natin yung mga ano natin. Ayan. Hello po kay Mr. Pasigas, Ms. Corpus, Mr. Reyes, Ms. Laurio, Mr. Valles. Miss Rubas, hello, hello, hello. Good afternoon po. Welcome, welcome, hello welcome. Po. Welcome po sa mga grade 12 dyan. Lahat pala sila grade 12. Hello lahat, po. Lahat sila grade 12. Hello <laughs> po sa lahat ng graduating, charot. <laughs> lahat ka graduate. Walang may iwan <laughs> paglalaban. Wag... Okay. So, ito. Quick profile sa ating speaker. So, for, ang first session natin is on biology. Gustong-gusto ko ipakilala yung speaker na to kasi parang ang sarap magkaroon ng kabarkada na sobrang lupet, di ba, Charles? Yung minsan may inggit ka na, ano ba naman yan? Siya na naman, pero actually proud ka sa kaibigan mo. So, eto, yeah. ang ating speaker ay graduate ng Bachelor of Science in Psychology noong 2018. He studied mm-hmm. in Centro Escolar University at gumraduate ng Manya Cum Laude. So meaning, in translation yeah. sa, from Latin to English, with high honor siyang high gumraduate. Honor. Yes. He was a consistent dean's lister and president's lister. Kapag dean's lister and president's lister, ito yung mga honors na natatanggap mo at the end of every semester. So consistent yan mula first year. Nayon. Ever since his stay in college, academic scholar siya. Wala siya halos tuition binabayaran because of his academic performance. He was also an advocate for the sciences. Bukod sa Brainy, siya ay active sa mga social events. And he became the vice president of the University Science Club from 2016 to 2017. Ngayon, Nung nag fourth year siya, he became the president of the science club and took over in managing the club. He was also, ito, pumapadyan din yung speaker natin. First runner-up ng Mr. Oh. CEU 2018. Diba? Full package na ba, Charles? Yes, sir. Okay. May ganyan, may ganito. Ganon. Okay. Tapos, he was also awarded as a model president in Centro Escolar University nung pagka-graduate niya, and ni-recognize siya as one of the finalists to become one of the 10 outstanding students in the Philippines. He also completed a research, yeah. ito yung undergraduate research niya yeah. in biology, the effects of pH levels to the mortality rates of crowns, crown of thorn starfish. Yeah. Ang crown of thorn starfish kasi ay isang type ng starfish na invasive. Paano siya naging invasive? Because kinakain niya yung mga coral reefs natin sa Bulinao, Pangasinan. Eh di ba alam naman natin, ang coral reefs natin ay nauubos na at matagal, baago po magkaroon yeah. ng panibagong corals na maipamalak. And ngayon, after he graduated, he is currently a full-time scholar sa Ateneo de Manila University studying medicine. Okay, di ba bongga yung speaker natin? So I, oh, so guys, I would like to give this chance na maipakilala sa inyo ang ating speaker. Let uh, let us all welcome Mr. Jan Toby E. Cruz. 
Oh, pa- let's all welcome our dear speaker. Oh, nandito na si Sir Toby. Sir Toby. Hello. Sir Toby, andyan na po ba tayo, sir? Hello. Dinig ba ako? Ayun, andyan na si... Ayan na, ayan. Wait lang, ha? <laughs> okay. So, sige, wait lang, ha? Sir Toby. Hi. Hello, guys. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Wait lang. Nawala na naman ang ating comment section. Ay, ang ating ano. Presentation. So, Sir Toby, kumusta naman? Is it, oh, oh, how oh, the... Uh, yeah, sige, sige. Mm-hmm. Kumusta naman pala ngayon? As a med, current med student, how are you coping with the pandemic? Um, actually, you med student is actually same lang with what you guys are experiencing right now. Puro online. Online lang din talaga. So, lahat ng exams, lahat ng quizzes, purely online. So, um, same struggles, Zoom fatigue, parang lagi na lang computer yung hinaharap mo. So, kahit in med school, the problem is still relevant and yeah, dami-dami pa rin tayo dito. Ayun, so supposedly yung tututunan mo face-to-face na bawasan, no sir? Well, actually kasi in med school, regardless kung face-to-face or hindi, magbabasa ka pa rin talaga at magbabasa ng libro. So regardless if the classroom is there or not, the books will always be there. <laughs> so technically, all your knowledge, manggagaling at manggagaling sa libro. So yeah, although factor pa rin talaga yung physical classes Ayun. kasi mas mararating doing stuff. But yeah. Aral pa rin, pag-isika pa rin siya at the end of the day. Okay. So, ayun, konting chika lang yung kina kay Sir Toby. Now, let's begin with our talk with our dear speaker, Sir Toby. Ayun, start na ba tayo? Yes, sir. Sige po. Alright. Okay, so, hello guys. So, as sabi nga ni Sir Joshua kanina, my name is Toby. And I'm here to give a short talk lang naman about um, my degree, which is biology, and also um, tips and tricks na lang din, how to survive college, and also how to go to where I am right now, which is in med school. So, um, more than the career talk, mas nag-focus ako sa pagiging inspirational talk kasi parang mas relevant din naman siya. Kasi yung mga technical side ng mga courses, makikita mo naman sa website. But yung how to get there and how to ace it. It's something na hindi natin nakukuha online lang. Okay? So, ilan yung participants sa ating yun, Sir Josh? Nandiyan ka ba? <laughs> no, wala siya. Okay, so to the participants out there. Sir, actually, maraming... right now, ayun. Sige, sir. Tuloy mo. <laughs> okay, so to the participants out there, maraming salamat for um, taking time to listen sa presentation na to. So, magiging short lang naman to and sana may mapulot kayo and hopefully may ma-inspire ako kahit isa lang dito and that would mean a lot to me. So, yeah. So, before we start, nag-prepare actually ako ng quiz. <laughs> quiz na naman, sabi niyo sa akin. But actually, this quiz is something to give you a little bit background about medicine and biology in general. So, this is a six-point nice-to-know question. So, yung mechanics. Next slide, please. Yeah. So, yung mechanics is to actually... May mga question kasi, no? And multiple choice siya. So, instead of writing the letter, i-type mo yung buong sagot. And kung sino makakuha ng tamang sagot na nakatype ng buo, siya yung makakakuha ng point. Kung sino yung pinakamabilis. And kung sino yung pinakamaraming point at the end of the uh, question in the questions, makakuha daw ng ano, plus points kay ano, Sir Joshua. Baka exempted na daw sa exam, ganun. <laughs> You know, may exemption sa exam. <laughs> pag mali mo naman. Kung may naka-perfect, sige, i-exempt sa exam, buong section. 
<laughs> sige, sir. Sige, sige. Start, start so, na ba tayo? Oh, yeah. So, before we start, ah, I don't expect you guys to actually know everything kasi med stuff talaga siya and bio stuff. So, but don't worry. Re- super relevant yung mga questions ito and I'm pretty sure ma-apply nyo siya right after you finish this talk. Okay? Um, so, 10 seconds lang pala yung bibigay natin to, ano, to answer. Okay? Tapos si Sir Josh na yung bahala mag-monitor. Alright? Sige. Timer. Sir, mm. So, ganito. Ganito ang ganap pala. Before we, ano, we proceed sa set of questions, reminder, ang instruction ni Sir Toby sa inyo ay, unang-una sa lahat, type yo the en- entire answer. Hindi lang po yung letter, Okay? type the entire answer on the on the chat box first person to get the correct answer will be our winner for that perspe- uh, respective question now ito total natin ngayon kung sino may pinakamarami ha so per section galing-galingin niyo naman mga representative sa promise may malaki kayong incentive sa akin okay sige sir let's start laban ito <laughs> pwedeng pwede naman pwedeng pwede naman para mas talo sila yung ganyo kasi expected ko oh, ng sige, mahirap yung ating oh. magiging finals okay sige po oh. alright game first question what is the etiology of this radiograph finding is it viral bacterial covid or normal findings Mag- sige Josh, sir Josh ikaw na mag cue ng ano time. again again so sige Again, what is the etiology of this radiograph finding? Is it va- A, viral, B, bacterial, C, COVID, D, normal findings? So, first to get the correct answer, we'll get a point. Type the entire answer and timer starts now. 10 seconds lang, ah. Ten. Okay, hanggang kay Mr. Velasco lang ang ating ang ating sagot. So, Sir Toby, shall we find out the correct answer? Yes, please. Paneksa ng slide. Sir? Yeah? Med- medyo Sir? nawawala ka po. Hello? Hello? Sir Toby? Hello? Narinig ba ako? Sir? Medyo hindi ka po marinig. Yes, naririnig po sir. Hello? Sir, Hello? Sir, Hello? Hello? Bako sa line po ni Sir Ano Kandi. Okay. So the correct answer is yeah. bacterial. So yeah, congrats sa nakakuha. So sige, tip na lang din para may learning sa sayo ngayon. So kasi sa x-rays kasi, yung unang yung tinitignan is yung mga opacities or yung mga uh, consolidation. So yung mga white-white na nakikita nyo aside from the heart. So as you can see, sa upper right, it is bacterial pneumonia. Pag sinabi mo kasing bacterial pneumonia, yung technical term dun is um, diffuse consolidation. Ibig sabihin, sa isang part lang ng lungs yung whitish areas. So as you can see, sa upper right, yung whitish areas ay nasa left side ng patient. So that can be conclu- um, partly ruled in as bacterial pneumonia. Tapos, pag viral pneumonia, it's diffuse opacities or diffuse whiteningz. May kita nyo dito sa C. And sa D naman, it's COVID pneumonia. Kasi yung tamang term talaga dun is ground glass opacity. So ibig sabihin, yung buong lung field mo halos puting pote. So yun yung differences ng three. So kung ano yung mga whitish areas na yun, pwedeng fluid, pwedeng mucus, or pwedeng infection. Okay? Okay. Okay, Sir Toby, so may nakakuha ng tamang sagot. And the first person who got it correct is Mr. Derek Ray of STEM 203 Cooper. So that's one point for Cooper. Oh, ibang sections, keep up. Go Next Pascal. question na po ba, Sir? Oh, sige, no, ikaw na rin mag-read para ano. Okay, para sige po. Sige. Ikaw na lang mag-explain ng answer, Sir, okay? Yeah, sige, sige. sige. Po. Okay. Next, which parasitic infection represents the Loeffler syndrome? Is it A... Schistosoma SP, B, Enterobius SP, C, Ascaris SP, or D, Tinea SP. Again, which parasitic infection represents the Lof- represents with Loeffler syndrome? Is it A, Schistoma SP, 
B. Enterobius SP C. Ascaris SP or D. Tainea SP Okay Timer starts now Okay, time's up everyone Hanggang kay Mr. Arias lang po ang ating sagot So, Sir Toby, shall I proceed with the answer? Yes, yes please Ayan. The correct answer is Ascaris lumbricoides or Ascaris SPP. So Ascaris lumbricoides, alam na alam nyo to, it's commonly known as the spaghetti worm na nakikita sa intestines. Yeah, so yun yung isa sa mga common na uh, parasitic infections dito sa Pinas, no? So ano ba yung Loeffler syndrome? So explain ko lang no, para ma-appreciate natin. So di ba? kasi yung parasite kasi nakukuha mo siya by ingesting the eggs kware sa soil or pag hindi malinis sa food or pag nag-touch ka sa lupa tapos kinain mo para sa mga bata and then magka-travel yung egg sa intestine mo tapos from the intestine mag-hatch yung egg magpapas siya through the lining of your intestine and it will go through your lungs tapos yung larvae magde-develop dun yung mag dun siya magmamature tapos yung Loeffler syndrome is parang ubo dry cough nagwiwising akala mo asthma akala mo uh, pneumonia pero yun pala mga uod na pala yung sa lungs mo so bakit siya nasa lungs kasi kailangan niya ng oxygen para magmature tapos pag medyo mature na siya uubuhin siya ng tao tapos pag nasa esophageal area na siya babab- malulunok mo siya tapos pupunta siya sa intestines mo pabalik tapos doon na siya mag-grow at magiging spaghetti tapeworm <laughs> gets ba <laughs> So, actually, sir, baka actually, man... oh. <laughs> actually, yung ibang, Sige, ano, yung ibang parasites dyan, um, unang, unang schistosoma. Sige, pwedeng pabalik sa kapilang slide. Yeah. Schistosoma is what you call the most romantic parasite. Bakit? Kasi kung makikita nyo sa, ano, sa picture, pag nag-mate na yung male tsaka female worm ng schistosoma, forever na sila nakadikit sa isa't isa. Tapos mag-reproduce ang sila, mag-reproduce hanggang sa mamatay, basically. <laughs> Tapos yung other... So wala sila ibang purpose, sir, kung gani mag-reproduce? Yes, may forever okay. sa schistosoma. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Tapos yung tayo uh-huh. naman, yung mga nakikita sa pork or sa beef, yung mga tapeworm, enterobius, pag makati yung puwet nyo, pwedeng bacteria, ay pwedeng parasite siya. So yeah. Sige, next. Okay. So sir... Congratulate natin. Another um, different section naman ang nakakuha ng tamang sagot. First answer to I uh, first person to got the correct answer for question number 2 is from STEM 204 Descartes, Miss Racy Santos. Okay, Max next question na po it. tayo. Yeah. Next. The sign of benediction is due to the injury of what nerve? Is it A, the median nerve, B, the ulnar nerve, C, radial nerve, or D, femoral nerve? Again, the sign of benediction is due to the injury of what nerve? Is it A, median nerve, B, ulnar nerve, C, radial nerve, or D, femoral nerve? Timer starts now. Okay, time's up. Kay Miss Mitch Takiki lang po ang ating last answer na babasahin. So, the answer for this is, Sir Toby? Yes. The correct answer is the median nerve. Okay, so itong ano na to, question na to, it's more on anatomy physiology ng med. No? So kasi sa kamay kasi natin, marami kasing innervations or nerve supply na nagpapagalaw sa kanya. And one of the major two are the median and the ulnar nerve. So yung median nerve, tatandaan nyo, ito yung nagpapagalaw ng thumb natin, ng ring finger, ay ano ba to? Ng index finger and the middle finger. So, ayun yung nagkakos ng movement niya. So, pag nag-injure yung median nerve mo, hindi mo siya magagalaw. Kaya, pag nag a ka mag-close ng fist mo, ito lang yung nasasara mo. Kaya, hand of benediction, di ba? Sa mga pupit yung ginagawa nila. Basically, hindi kasi nila magalaw. Kaya, nasa-stuck sa ganitong position. Yet? Okay. Right. Okay. So, actually, Kung titingnan natin, the first person who got it correct was Mr. Mark Bukitkit. However, nagsagot na siya without me giving the signal 
na nagsimula na ang timer. So, I would discredit that answer and recognize the answer of Mr. Fritz Mahusay of STEM 204. Another point for Descartes. Okay, next question. Yeah. This signal transaction... This signal trans transduction protein defect is the major cause of dwarfism. A. Achondroplasia. B. Tanatropho ta tanadro sorry. <laughs> tanatrophoric dysplasia. C. Osteogenesis imperfecta. Or D. Osteonecrosis. Again, the signal trans transduction protein defect is the major cause of dwarfism. A. Achondroplasia. B. Tanato tanatrophoric dysplasia. C. Osteogenesis imperfecta. D. Osteonecrosis. Timer starts now. Nako po, dinaanan natin to. Hindi ko lang sinabi which nerve, pero pinagawa ko kayo ng case study tungkol sa dwarfism. Dapat may makakasagot ng tama nito. Okay, time's up. Correct answer is what, Sir Toby? Ayan. The correct answer is actually achondroplasia. So this question is more on genetics and pathology kung sa med, no? Um, actually, sa med kasi, it's an important thing to understand the naming concepts, no? Pag, kasi, di ba, dito kasi, the major cause of dwarfism is achondroplasia. So tatandaan nyo, pag may A sa start, it, ibig sabihin nun wala. A, wala. Ang chondro, ibig sabihin ay cartilage. Ang plasia, ibig sabihin growth. So if you're gonna combine it together, walang cartilage growth. A chondroplasia. And ano ba yung um, kailangan for bone formation? It starts at cartilage. So a chondroplasia, walang growth sa cartilage, walang hindi nagta-transform into a hard bone, kaya maliit lang siya. And the other naman, thanatrophoric dysplasia, it's um, more complicated cause of chondroplasia. Tapos, osteogenesis imperfecta is also known as your brittle bone disease. So, nangyayari doon, pag nadapa ka agad, mababali agad yung puto mo. Kaya, brittle bone disease. And next naman, osteonecrosis, nag, pag osteo bone necrosis, nabubulok. Nabubulok na buto because of infection. Yun. Nag-spread yung bacteria sa buto mo, tapos nabubulok siya. Pero yeah, achondroplasia is the answer. Okay, so congratulations, Ms. Janewell Castro of SEM201 Euclid. You are the first person to, to get the correct answer. So that's, so far scoring natin, one point for STEM203, two points for STEM204, and one point for STEM201. Ngayon, may dalawang questions na lang na naiiwan. Tama ba, sir? Six yeah. questions to? Okay, uh -oh. next. What is the scientific name of this plant? A. Pyrus malus, B. Solano melongena, C. Zea mais, B. Oriza sativa. Again, what is the scientific name of this plant? A. Pyrus malus, B. Solano melongena, C. Zea mais, D. Oriza sativa. Timer starts now. Time's up. So the answer is Sir Toby. So, the correct answer for that is Solano Melongena. It's a scientific name for Talong, in short. Okay, so Pyrus malus is apple, Solano Melongena is Talong, Zea Mace is Mais, and Oriza Sativa is Bigas or Kanin. Uh, mean then kailangan nyo rin i-take note na at least ma-appreciate nyo yung scientific name yung at this point kasi kung wari, yung common name kasi minsan nanggagaling sa scientific name. For example, Zea Maze is corn. Zea Maze, maize, mais. Ayan. O kaya Oriza Sativa, rice. Oriza, rice. <laughs> Ganon. So, sana ngayon parang pagbibili kayo sa palengke, no? Uh, oh. Manang... Isa pong kilo ng pyrosmalus. Alaan nyo yung apple. <laughs> so, yun, 
para magmukha kayong matalin, di ba? <laughs> di ba? Actually, okay. sa uh, lahat ng ganito, isa lang matandaan ko. Kasi ano? nung college, kasama, di ba, may botany din kami. Kokos mm-hmm. no si Fera lang, namumukod tangin na tandaan ko. So, anyone, sige, bonus point. Sino kaya makakahula? Ano ang kokos no si Fera? Pibigyan ko ng plus point to. Kokos no si Fera. May makakasagot kaya? Kokos no si Fera. Yan lang namumukod tangin na tatandaan ko sa botany ko. <laughs> sa scientific Sagutin names. Sagutin ko na <laughs> Sagut- Walang sumasagot actually. Sige, ayun, si Fritz, sumagot na naman si Fritz, coconut, kokos, Diyos ko. So si, yung point na to kay Fritz lang, hindi sa Descartes, okay? <laughs> so ayun, last question. Ah, sige. Ay. Identify the bacteria causing this growth on EMB sugar. A. E. coli. B. Streptococcus pyogenes. Pyogenes. Ay, pyogenes. C. Staphylococcus aureus. D. Vibrio cholerae. Again, identify the bacteria causing this growth on EMB agar. A. E. coli. B. Streptococcus pyogenes. C. Staphylococcus aureus. D. Vibrio cholerae. Timer starts now. Time's up. Okay. The answer is... Ayan. The correct answer is actually E. coli or Escherichia coli. So this question is from microbiology. So um, actually, sa college ng BS Bio, meron siya. And also in medicine, kailangan din siya. So yes, bio. Go for it. <laughs> hindi, joke lang. Okay, so pag sinabi kasi yung E. coli, uh, sa, oh, ay hindi, joke lang pala. Pag sa microbiology kasi, yung ginagawa nyo, nag-grow kayo ng bacteria sa mga agar plate as you can see in the right pic, the right side of the ano, slide no so kumbaga kukuha kayo ng sample ko sa sa cellphone nyo ayan isang project yun nung ano micro nung college no magswab kayo sa cellphone mo tapos ilalagay mo sa culture media or dito sa agar plate iswab mo ganun with uh, ano with a cotton bud layman's term no iswab mo yan ganun tapos iiwan mo sa incubator for an hour, or for one day, tapos pag makikita mo yung growth ng bacteria, mas marami pa dyan, di ba? So, yeah, sanitation, doon mo ma-appreciate yun. So anyway, E. coli kasi, bawat bacteria has a specific morphology when growing in an agar media, no? And E. coli, yung characteristic niya is green metallic sheen. So pag nakita mong green metallic sheen sa agar na yan, sa EMB agar, it's E. coli. So, yung E. coli kasi sa ano yan, sa intestine, common yun sa intestine natin. And sa mga maduduming areas contaminated with feces. Tapos, sa uh, streptococcus pyogenes, common common sakit yan, sore throat. Sa philococcus aureus, yun nakikita sa mga pimples nyo. Pag to break out kayo, it's because of that. And lastly, vibrio cholerae is ano, um, cholera. Uh, all right. Pa pa pala, may pahabol pa pala. Okay. This sea star causes an outbreak which feeds on what? Is it A, dead fish, B, corals, C, sponges, D, phytoplankton. Again, this sea star causes an outbreak and feeds and which feeds on what organism? Is it A, dead fish, B, B corals, C, sponges? B. Phytoplankton. Timer starts now. Time's up. So, the correct answer is... And the correct answer for that is corals, no? There's... Actually, binagit na ni Sir Josh kanina pag nakikinig kayo, masasagot niya siya. So, yan yung naging thesis ko nung college. And mas may explain ko yan mamaya as we go through the talk, no? And kung makikita nyo yung picture, kasi yung sa thesis namin, kung ang patay kami ng ano, starfish. So, i-explain ko sa inyo mamaya kung bakit. Pero kung yung starfish na yan, na mamatay na at kapit na kapit pa rin lumalaban, paano pa kaya kayo? Ayun. Grabe, na, grabe sa metaphor, ha? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so, kaya niya rin yan. 
kaya kaya ibig sabihin lumalaban ng starfish mas lalo kayo di ba oh. so ayan last question kung di kanya mahal para saan pa <laughs> <laughs> Actually, may sagot dyan. Ka ma- mapanakit ka. May sagot dyan. <laughs> may sagot dyan. Ang tamang sagot hmm. dyan. Ayan. Pa-, pa next slide, please. Mag-aral ng maigi para who you siya. <laughs> Actually, parang ironic as it sounds, no? Pero kasi the best investment that you can give to yourself is actually education. Kasi kahit iwan ka ng kahit sinong tao sa mundo, yung degree mo laging nakadikit din sa pangalan mo. Kaya, it's the best investment that you could give to yourself and it would um, bring you a really, really long way. Okay? So, talking about education, meron akong pandagdag na question. Hindi na to about sa love life. Okay, magalala. Sige, next <laughs> slide, please. Ayan. What are your goals? I know some of you here wanted to pursue medicine like me before or wants to be an accountant, a lawyer, gusto magkaroon ng business, or basically gusto lang maging mayaman. So, those are your long-term goals. Pero if makikita nyo sa blue part, meron iba sa inyo, I'm pretty sure, at sobrang sure ako, yung goal mo lang talaga ngayon is pumasa at matapos ang SEM na to, or yung karamihan talaga dito, wala akong goals, gusto ko lang mag-survive at matapos yung araw na to, matapos yung boring na lecture na to. Joke. <laughs> Ayan. So actually, um, yung point ko dito is regardless of your goals, kahit ano dyan sa tatlo or kung meron ka pang ibang goal, ang masasabi ko lang dyan, all goals are valid regardless of what goal you have right now. Next slide, please. Ayan. Bakit yung tinanong what are your future goals? Because your goals will keep you going. <laughs> No? Kasi pag alam mo kasi kung ano yung gusto mo maging, pag alam mo kung saan mo gusto pumunta, it will keep you focused, it will give you strength, and it will tell you not to give up. Specifically, this uh, talk, no short talk, sana short talk lang, will focus on how to get that MD or simply put, how to get into your dream med school and how to ace your college journey, no? So, uh, this topic, mag-share lang ako ng tips, experiences, and personal lessons na sana madala niyo sa future niyo. So, going back, no, your goals will keep you going. So, to do that, you have to be reminded of three things lang naman. Number one is to dream big. Number two is to set goals. And number three is to take action. So, dyan iikot yung uh, message natin ngayon. So, let's start with the first one. Next, please. Dream big. So yung tanong ko ulit, no, ano ba yung pangarap mo at who do you really want it to be ba in the future? So for some of you like me, uh, gusto mag ng med and uh, personal experience lang. no. Ever since kasi nung bata ako, gusto ko na talaga mag-medicine kasi parang kung tatanungin ako, parang grade 4 ako or so some, somewhere like that age, no? Ang sasabihin ko lagi, gusto kong maging doktor. Pero, yun lang. Kasi trip ko, yun yung nakita ko sa TV. Ganun. Pero, um, nag-lock in yung decision ko maging doktor nung namatay yung brother ko nung 10, 13 years old ako tapos 10 years old siya because of a brain damage sa kanya kasi lagi siyang nababagok. So, nagkaroon ng complication. Namatay siya like in less than 24 hours na uh, confined siya sa hospital. So, yung turning point ko nun is parang as a child, alam mo, gusto, ka mag, gusto mo maging doktor. Yun lang yung alam mo. Pero wala kang magawa. You felt helpless and you felt like you're insignificant kasi parang namamatay na yung mga mahal mo sa buhay. Tapos ikaw, dasal lang magagawa mo. And that ignited me to actually, gusto ko sa susunod na may magkakasakit, ako lang tutulong. Hindi lang dasal, kundi sa gawa na rin. Ayan. So, bakit mo kailangan mag-dream big? Kasi, it's important before setting up your goals. You really need to know what you want and what you really want to be. Dapat desidido ka dito. And it starts earliest now. So, kumbaga, if you're not yet sure, okay lang, hindi mi na madalian. Pero ang advice ko, as earliest now, try to look for what you really wanted to be in life para at least align ka and hindi ka lost pag na, ano ka, pag na down or something. Next. 
natin yun. However, no, marami ta- sabi natin may goals ka na, may pangarap ka, pero sa goals natin kasi, no, laging merong umeepa, laging may problema, at hindi maalis yan. So, um, six years ago, when I was in your shoes, nung fourth year high school ako, I really don't know what college I'm going to study on. Hindi ko alam kung saan school ako kasi unang-una, wala kaming pera. Um, dalawa kaming magkapatid na lang na natira noon and yung ate ko is college na. So I have to give way. I have to stop for a year para lang makagraduate yung ate ko. And I know some of you maybe ganitong situation then financial problems. Ayan, okay. Tapos, um, yun nga, financial problems. And pangalawa, hindi ako pumasa sa dream school ko. As you all know, sa CEO ko na-graduate. So, basically, hindi ako pumasa ng UP. Hindi ako natuloy sa... Hindi ako nag-try sa Ateneo kasi mahal. Hindi ako nag-tumuloy sa Lasan. Hindi ako tumuloy sa UST. So, nag-settle ako sa school na basically hindi kilala. Also, ito pa yung sabi ni Sir Josh kanina. Nung high school ako, hindi ako ganun katalinuhan na sa gitna lang ako. Hindi ako kapansin-pansin, wala ako sa top 10, lagi akong huling nang pipili sa group works kasi ako yung parang uh, last priority kasi hindi naman matalino. Something like that, no? And because of that, I felt like I wasn't good enough. Sabi ko, hindi naman ako matalino, kaya ko pa bang mag-med? Is it really worth for me? Wala na kami pera, wala na akong utak, so paano pa ako mag-med? Ganun. And also, since hindi ko alam yung school na kukunin ko, understandable na. Hindi ko rin alam yung course na kukunin ko rin. Ayan. But, we have to remember na yung setbacks, yung problema, or kahit anong inhibitions, sandyan yung lagi. And, it's a given eh. And you have to make a way for the situation that you have. Kaya, that's important too. Next slide, please. Set goals. So, di ba, Uh, you have to set goals kasi given the circumstances that you have, ano yung magagawa mo? Sabihin natin, wala kayong pera, uh, hindi ka matalino, or kung ano mang struggle yan. Nandiyan na yan eh. So the main problem actually is what you can do with the circumstances that you have right now. Okay? So nandiyan lagi yung mga challenges eh. So, yung pinaka-challenge sa atin in return is to do something within our situation. Okay? So, yun nga eh. Alam ko din sa sarili ko na upon entering college, no, uh, wala kaming pera, mahirap ang med, mahal, like 150,000 asim. So, scholarship lang talaga yung pag-asa ko. So, yeah, as I said kanina, no, wala akong college for a year and then nung nag-offer yung isa sa kamag-anak namin to sponsor my uh, studies kasi nag-reach out talaga ako kasi nag-PM ako ng mga tita-tita ko abroad. Tita, baka pwede pong maki- mahingi ng tulong, ganyan. So, another lesson for that is kung wala kang magawa sa feeling mo wala kang magawa sa situation mo, meron. Lagi at laging meron. Maghanap ka lang sa mga maliliit na butas at magagawan mo ng paraan yan. Okay? So, upon entering college, yun yung naging goal ko agad. I want to go into med school. Pero in order to do that, kailangan kong maging scholar, kailangan kong maging mataas yung grades. Ganon. So, yun yung basically naging goals ko. Sige, next please. Okay. So, let's say, let's focus on med. Kasi since med naman yung ano natin, line of uh, field, no? Um, before setting into your goals, no? Alamin mo muna kung ano ba yung requirements sa goal mo. Yung minimum requirements, yung unnegotiable ones, no? So, what are the requirements to get into med school? So, to get into med school, let's say, uh, USD or any med school, any four-year degree course, preferably BS, regardless of the school. So, okay lang kahit mag ka, okay lang kung mag-BS bio ka or nursing, kahit accountancy. May mga classmates ako accountancy pero nasa med school ngayon at matatalino, matatalino pa. Meron niya, BA Music. So basically, any course that you want, as long as um, masaya ka sa inaaral mo, and you go for a course na magkakaroon ka ng mataas na grades, kasi yun yung magiging advantage mo pag nag-apply ka sa med schools. And also, NMAT score. So yung NMAT score is actually an, an, parang a requirement 
for med schools and iba't ibang med schools may iba't ibang requirement for and math for example for UP kailangan 90 plus ang score mo ang uh, ibang schools pwedeng 45 lang it can go low as that so yeah so what i'm trying to say is that yung college mo galingan mo kasi yun yung magiging foundation mo sa and math pero madali lang yan kaya yung i-review and also Another requirement for med school actually is to get good college grades. Aim for laude kung kaya. Kasi yung med school kasi, um, for example, sige, sa Ateneo. Ateneo kasi only accepts 180 students per batch, per year. So kung 500 kayong nag-apply nun, ano yung magiging basis ng, ano, ng pagpasok? Well, syempre, grades. And also, leadership positions kasi most med schools today um, want students who are student leaders. So, pag nagpasok kayo sa college, don't only settle for good grades, but also aim for extracurriculars kasi lagay yung tandaan, there is life outside college and one of those is your extracurriculars. Sige, next slide please. Ayan, take action. So sabi ko nga kanina, no, number one is to dream big. Number two is to set goals. And once you have set your goals, take action. So nandito na tayo magkakatalo because this is where the hard work starts. So nung nag-enroll ako sa CEU with the degree of BS Bio, sabi ko sa sarili ko, mag-loud ako, magpapakabibo ako. Sasagarin ko yung lahat ng opportunities sa so pwede ko kunin sa akin kasi pangarap ko yung nakasalalay dito. Alam ko hindi ako ganun katalinuhan nung high school. Pero ilalaban ko talaga kasi ayokong, gusto kong iahon yung pamilya ko. Gusto kong malayo yung marating sa buhay. So, yung makakontrol ko lang talaga is yung grades ko, yung quizzes ko, and other stuff like that. So, lahat ng opportunities, tinatry ko talagang i-grab nung college. So, ngayon, um, feeling ko ito yung pinakainaabangan nyo kasi itong part na yung isi-share ko, kung paano ko natapos yung college, ano yung mga experiences, ano yung mga experience ko, ano yung mga natutunan ko. And basically, itong part na to, makipapakita ko sa inyo yung buhay ng isang biologist ng college and some parts ng buhay ng isang med student. Okay? Sige, next please. Ayan, the biology program. Um... The biology program is actually the study of life. So, sobrang lawak ng matututunan nyo dito from the smallest organisms, virus, cell, molecular stuff, kasi meron din kayong uh, molecular bio, meron kayong physics, chemistry, up until to the largest of largest, yung mga ecosystems, yung mga uh, continents, yung mga uh, tundra, mga ganyan, ecology as a whole. So, sobrang lawak ng magiging perspective mo in life and ma-appreciate mo siya as you go forward, no? Maraming aaralin sa bio, pero ang secret lang talaga dyan is to study hard. But remember to not lose yourself in the process. Kasi it's one thing to study hard, eh. And it's another thing, another thing to enjoy learning. So those two gives us the biggest difference there can be. Kasi pag ini-enjoy mo yung inaaral mo, mas ma-appreciate mo yung matututunan mo, mas ma-absorb mo siya. So yeah, enjoy, enjoy nyo lang talaga. Next slide, please. Okay, so let's say you wanted to um, enter the, the bio program, no? Ano ba itong papasukin ko? Ano ba yung mga subjects na ma-aral ko? So that includes zoology, systematics, botany, anatomy, physiology, microbiology, basically mga natan natanong ko sa quizzes kanina. Ayan, parasitology, molecular biology, genetics, etc. So, yun yung sinasabi ko kanina, very all-encompassing yung isang bio major kasi parang ang dami mong alam. Well, feeling mo lang. <laughs> Hindi, joke lang. Actually, marami kang talagang matutunan kasi everything about life may encounter mo. And ang ganda, ang ganda niya. Kasi dubo lang siya matututunan at um, hindi lang siya basa sa YouTube eh. There's more to that. Kaya baka naman if you're considering. Ayan. Okay, next. Next slide please. Ayan, so here's a big chunk of the ano, the talk today. No? So ito yung mga encounter ko nung student ako. So the left picture is genetics yan. Nag-breed kami ng fruit flies. 
So, kukuha kami ng red eye fruit red eyed fruit fly and tapos merong white eyed fruit fly tapos pagbe-breed namin siya together tapos titingnan namin yung mga offspring nila kung ilang percent yung naging red, ilang percent yung naging white. Tapos yung pagpaanakin mo lang sila ng paanakin hangga't sa makita mo yung results ng hinahanap mo. Ayan. Yung sa middle picture naman, um, it's one of the topics na inaral namin sa embryology or human uh, human animal development. Alala ko nung part na to, nag, ano kami, kumuha kami ng mga 28 na pirasong itlog sa farm. Tapos per day, binasag namin siya. Tapos binabad namin sa formalin hanggat sa ma-observe per day yung development ng chick. Ayan. Tapos yung third picture or yung nasa right is nagdaday sa rin ng pusa, ng pateng, ng palaka, at iba't iba pang um, animal sa bayo. So, inaaral niya yung anatomy, yung um, physiology, and makukumpare mo yan habang palaki ng palaki yung inaaral niyo. So, kung mahilig kayong magdaisek, mahilig ka sa animal, go for bio. Next slide, please. Ayan, um, yung nasa left, yung sinasabi ko kanina yung nag-grow kayo sa agar no, ng bacteria. And yung dito sa left, kung makikita nyo, ang tawag dyan is antibiotic susceptibility testing. So, mag-grow ka ng bacteria, like I've said kanina, tapos lalagyan, papatungan mo siya ng antibiotic sa tapat, ay sa taas niya. And kung makikita nyo, no, merong mga halos or mga clear um, areas, ibig sabihin yan, yan yung mga, yung power ng antibiotic, kumbaga. So, pinipigil niya yung mag-grow yung bacteria sa area na yan for a certain um, diameter. Ibig sabihin nun, resistant yung bacteria or tumatalab yung antibiotic sa bacteria na yun. Ayan. Tapos yung sa gitna naman, it's field biology. Basically, pupunta kami sa forest, magtatanim ng halaman, mag-a-assess ng ano, diversity, pipitas kami ng mga, huli kami ng insekto, ikaklassify namin, ganyan. And sa so right picture is, Um, something we studied in botany. nag kami ng sangkatutak na halaman. Diyan papasok sila Solano Melangena, sila Pyrus Malo, sila Apple Mo. And identify namin yung parts, compare, ganyan, preserve ng mga plants. Ayan. Diyan papasok yan. Yan, next. Ayan. So, ito yung pinaka na-enjoy ko sa bio. Kasi, nung bio kasi... Meron kaming marine biology, which is really fun. As you can see, yung nasa left, yan yung tridac na gigas. Some of you may know, yan yung ano, ano bang tawag yun? Giant clams ng Philippines, yung ninanakaw ng China sa atin. So, was, <laughs> ganun. <laughs> Ayun. So, yun nga, yan yung, uh, hinu- yung parang kinuha namin from our fieldwork sa dagat, tridac na gigas, tapos snail yung nasa gitna, and yung nasa right sea urchin na nahuli din namin sa ano, dagat. Pero binalik naman namin, don't worry. Ayan, next. Ayan. I, okay. So, before I continue, OJT days na kasi yan. So, um, yung slide before, yung mga in, uh, pinakita ko sa inyo, it's all about ACADS. So, pagdating sa ACADS, laging yung tatandaan na regardless of the course, mahirap siya at magpupuyat ka talaga. Magiging best friend mo yung kape and walang shortcut doon. Swear. Minsan, kailangan mo talagang mag-reach out din sa profs mo para tumaas yung grades mo. Ayan, magsisip-sip ka talaga minsan para tumaas as yung grades mo. Ayan, so surprise siya para maging mabait, para hindi ituloy yung quiz, yung mga ganun. Small things like that helps. And also, if there is one advice that I would give you, regardless of the course, and if you're aiming for good grades, quizzes pa lang galingan mo na kasi every point counts. As in, ano yan, um, you may not realize it now, pero pagdating nyo ng college, as in, quizzes palang galingan mo na kasi yun yung puhunan mo kung sakaling mababa ka sa exam or yun din yung hatak sa'yo pataas and yan yung mag-make it or break it kung mag-1 ka ba or mag-1, 2, 5. So, quizzes in the smallest things, do your best kasi it will really um, go a long way. Yeah. Okay, so going back, yung picture na makikita niyo dyan is actually yung OJT days ko. Ayan. Um, Nag-OJT kasi ako since I loved marine biology. Nag-immerse ako sa sarili ko sa OJT na may marine biology din. And kung alam niyo yung Bolinaw, Pangasinan, meron kasing Marine Science Institute doon by UP. And doon ako nag... Doon ko tinapon yung sarili ko for three months. Kasi sobrang interesting kasi... So, kung makikita nyo, gumawa kami ng mga booths, booths dyan and nag-host kami ng mga international conferences and also 
nagpaan na kami ng mga giant clams, nag uh, nagpalaki kami ng mga algae, nag-assess kami ng mga marine environment. At yung nasa lower left picture, yan yung pinaka-highlight kasi as in mag-swimming ka lang talaga, i-assess yeah, mo yung health ng coral reefs, something like that, no? So, OJT is uh, magandang part yan sa bio kasi marami kang pwedeng explore, pwedeng molecular biology, pwedeng genetics, marine bio, hospitals, etc. Ayan. Next slide, please. Ay- oh, yeah. Ayan. Ayan. Okay. So, yung slide na yan is actually my thesis nung college. Actually, our thesis kasi group siya. So, sige, Josh, pwedeng play yung video. Ayan. So, kung makikita nyo sa video habang nagliload, no, yan yung itsura ng uh, starfish in action nung in-injection na namin ng ano, different pH. Kasi, sabi nga ni Josh kanina, the Acantaster plan, C or yung uh, crown of thorns starfish is causes an outbreak here in the Philippines kasi kung if some of you might know yung um, corals it uh, yung nakikita niyo sa upper left it takes 10 to 15 years para lumaki ng ganyang kalaki ganyan 15 years yung inaabot siyan pero yung crown of thorn starfish um isang gabi lang mas malaki pa diyan yung nakakain niya 3 by 3 feet yung nakakain niya sa isang gabi and imaginein mo, 10 to 15 years yung tinubo ng coral mo, pero isang gabi lang kakainin ng starfish na yan. And also, bakit ba dumadami yung starfish na yan? So, same with algal blooms, yung mga red tide. Yung nagkakos talaga yan is yung mga dumi sa dagat or yung mga organic matter. So, pag madumi yung dagat, nag-grow yung starfish lalo and kinakain niya yung corals. So, yun yung goal ng research namin. Nahanap kami ng way para mapatay yung starfish. Ayun. So, nag inject lang kami ng different pH levels. So, if you remember chemistry, yan. Para mamatay sila. Bakit ayaw mag Sayang naman. <laughs> Actually, ano, medyo bumabagal yung internet. Pero, eto, wait lang natin na onti, sir. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> sa mga, ano, subjects ni Sir Toby, may ilang similar subjects kasi sa psychology. Kasi, Bachelor of Science in Psychology is also a... Undergra- uh, an, a, an undergraduate degree na pwede gamitin for pre-med. Okay? So, ayun, meron din kaming comparative anatomy yung gaya nung nabanggit ni Sir Toby, nag-dissect din ng sharks, ng cats, saka ng frogs. Kung some of our, pro- sa sa genetics, lalo na sa genetics, yung isang prof namin doon, ano siya, di ba, we were told to breed yung red eye with another red eye na kapwa niya. Tapos, yung next generation nun, o kung matatandaan nyo sa lesson natin sa bio, is yung second gen- second filial generation, yun naman, ibibreed sa so white-eyed naman na fruit flies. Tapos, from there, merong magkakaroon ng variety ng offspring. Eh, yung isang prof doon, sobrang lupit. Hindi, kailangan mo kasi pwede, ano, idikit yung mga fruit flies sa notebook, sa logbook nyo, per generation. Eh, yung prof naming isa, Isang tingin niya lang, alam niya agad kung nandadaya ka sa generation o hindi. <laughs> Naging prof mo ba yun, Sir Toby? <laughs> hindi, pero ano kami din, best friend kami ng prof na yan, bilang sip-sip. Hindi, <laughs> <The> joke. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, may nakita akong comment dito kanina eh. Gusto rin nila ako i-surprise bago daw magpa-quiz. Kasi naman kung ano tinuturo mo sa mga to, sip-sip daw. <laughs> joke lang. <laughs> Ay, may nagtulong dito, ano daw lasa ng coral? So, kung, for some of you who wants to know, ang coral, yung amoy niya malansa, parang isda. So, kung yan, di ba, yung nakita nyo kasi sa screen is yung top portion ng coral. So, yung sa baba niya, maano siya, madulas, tas malansa, tas kung ilalabas mo siya out of the water, amoy isda. Sobrang tigas niya, kung gusto mong kainin, bahala ka, umabasag yung ipin mo dyan. Pero hard coral kasi siya, so ano siya hindi mo siya makakain. Gusto mo dila, anong gusto mo? Lasang isda pa rin siya. <laughs> Ayan. Ayun, actually, sir, medyo nagkakaroon tayo ng problema sa ano. Siguro, I'll flash na lang sa kanila yun in one of my classes kasi ano naman eh, magigi next week siguro, isama ko na lang sa discussion ko. Uh-huh. Yung itsura na lang ni ano. Ayaw mag-play eh. 
<laughs> okay lang, okay lang. Tapos ito pa nakita ko sa comment, no? Dangerous being starfish na inaaral namin. Actually, yes, kasi poisonous siya. <laughs> so, ingat-ingat lang sa, ano, sa paghawak. Ayun, sir, um, can you give us a brief background pa? Anong mga klaseng substances yung ini-inject nyo kay starfish given na yung different pH levels? Mm-hmm. Sige, pop-quiz tayo, sir, Toby. Okay. Um, na disk Tingnan natin kung marerecall pa nila. Ano ang hmm. optimal pH level na tinatawag? Anong level para masabi mong gitna siya ng basic and acidic? Sino, magka- sino magkasagot yan? Ako ba? <laughs> sino, sila. Hindi, sila, 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 sila. Oh, okay, okay. Siyempre, dagdag points na rin sa kanila, no? Ano kaya yung parang neutral level between acid an acidic solution and a basic solution? Anong anong level 'yon? Anong level ng pH 'yon, 'di ba? Sir, may nakikita ka na bang tamang sagot? Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ang dami mm-hmm. ng sagot Ang dami. Tama. So tama na turo ko, confident ako pala ako. <laughs> Charot lang. <laughs> Actually, Sir Toby is one of my consultants regarding sa classes natin sa bio, 'di ba? Taray. So ayun, ano-ano yung mga substances sir na ini-inject nyo sa ano, starfish? Yung anong klasing pH level po ba? Is it acidic or basic po ba ini? Mm, gets. Okay. Actually, sa research namin no, pag sinabi mo, nung sinabi ko sinabi ng pH, it means all the levels possible no, from 1 to 14. So, yeah, meron kaming uh, reagents na nag-start sa 1. At meron din siyang nag-end sa 14. So kung interested kayo sa results, namatay yung starfish around pH 4 at pH 11. So yeah, tama yung sinabi ni Josh na, Sir Josh na neutrality, it's applicable to even the, the invertebrates or yung mga starfish. No? Hindi nila kaya tolerate yung ano, very acidic or very basic environment. So yeah, may ano sila. May feeling sila, Joe. Ayun, sir. May pahabol na tanong. Ano daw, anong substance kaya yung yung certain pH level na ginamit nyo? Gumamit ah, substance? Pa ano substance mm-hmm. daw yun? Ano yung pinaka-effective um, daw doon? Actually, yung ginamit namin kasi is um, nag-dilute uh, kami ng acetic acid and sodium hydroxide bleach and vinegar in short para i-mix up namin para magano siya to have different to produce uh, sorry to produce different pH levels no so yun um yung purong acetic uh, acid or vinegar nasa around pH 1 to 2 siya kasi yung purong um bleach or sodium hydroxide nasa 13 to 14 siya so yeah basically covered mo yung buong ano buong uh, chart ng pH pero kung bakit yun yung ginamit kasi sa research, uh, mag, mag, ano ka talaga, magka-pattern ka talaga minsan ng mga studies na nagamit na before. And yun yung mga studies na nagamit before na na-inject na sa mga starfish na yan. Okay. So, additional information for, to our dear STEM students. Ang tawag sa research design nila Sir Toby ay experimental design. Which is hindi natin na-apply ngayon, especially you, you, we are in a pandemic. Supposedly, mga ganyang klaseng research sana ang inyong gagawin sa cap- research capstone nyo. Okay? So, next slide na ba tayo, sir? Ah, wait lang. May isa akong ano? May isa akong... May dalawa akong question na gustong sagutin. So, ah, sige, sige. Yun, okay. Ano? Okay, uh, sir. Sige po. Sige. Kay Janine L- Lanzuela. Shout out to you, miss. Ayan. So, yung question na is, yung starfish ba walang tulong sa dagat kaya papatayin? Actually, dyan papasok yung... Um, Uh, invasiveness ng organism, no? Actually, every organism na nasa dagat, at normal amounts, it's helpful. Kumbaga, yung ano kasi, yung function kasi yan, at a normal setting, di ba kumakain siya ng corals? Eh kasi, usually kasi, in a, yun nga sabi ko, in a normal setting, mga 3 to 10 lang yung mga starfishes na yan pag healthy yung ano, marine environment mo. Pero, pag uh, uh, nasa outbreak ka kasi, It goes from 1,000 to 10,000 starfish per marine environment. So, ganun karami. So, dun siya nagiging ano, dangerous kasi it does more harm than good. So, yung good kasi niya is parang meron kasing ibang coral sa fast growing. And yung starfish na yan, since kumakain siya ng coral, kinokontrol lang niya yung growth para 
ma-maintain din yung, para hindi sila mag-agawa ng nutrients ng iba pang organisms. But since it's too much, nasasapawan niya at namamatay yung corals, which is really bad kasi important yung corals as you all know. Ayan. Ayan. So yung um, second question, paano mo malalaman kung dangerous or safe ang isang starfish? Actually, relatively safe naman ang starfish. Um, nasabi ko lang na poisonous siya pag na ano kanya, na tusok kanya talaga. Pero nasa pinakababa sila ng dagat eh. So I don't think matutusok ka basta-basta yan at hindi mo siya maaabot agad-agad. Uh, kung poisonous yung starfish, bakit hindi kumakalat, kumakalat sa dagat? Kasi nasa organism lang siya. Hindi siya nag-release sa tubig. Pag na-prick mo lang siya, tsaka lang siya mag-release ng ano, toxin. Pero hindi naman siya super poisonous. Like, kakate ka lang and ma- ma-irritate lang yung skin mo. Pero hindi naman nakakamatay. Alright. So, okay. Next Sige sa next slide. Later na yung Q&A natin, dear students, ha? Okay. <laughs> Ayan. So, as I've said kanina, no? Hindi, I mean, it's good to have good grades, no? Pero it's another thing to have an organization outside. Kasi there's really more to life than just grades. At sinasabi ko sa inyo, sa college, hindi lang siya basta aral. Pwede kang mag-explore. There's always life outside ACADS. Pwede kang pumarty, pwede kang mag-orgs, pwede kang mag-jowa, pwede kang gumimik. Oh, okay lang yun. As long as you do everything in moderation and you know your priorities at the end of the day. So ako, like, honestly, gumigimik ako, nagpa-party ako, but gigimik ako pag walang exam, pag walang um, gagawin kinabukasan, ganun. So, yeah, practice moderation lang. So, going back, no, go explore and try joining organizations kasi sobrang daming opportunities. Um, mahasa yung communication skills mo, magiging confident ka sa harap ng maraming tao, and yun yung gusto ng ano, mga med school. Gusto nila yung palaban sa buhay, yung ano ka, kailangan as a doctor, dapat confident ka, dapat ano ka sa pasyente mo, kundi hindi maniniwala yung pasyente mo sa'yo. So anyway, yung mga orgs kasi, isa sa mga perks niyan is, nung college ako, nakaka-attend ako ng mga international conferences, nakaka-attend ako ng mga nationwide cleanups, and also nakakapunta kami sa mga iba't ibang provinces para magturo ng bata, gumawa ng mga science fairs, etc. So, yeah, it's really a good um, experience na sa college mo lang siya mararanasan. So, if I were you, kung na, as an incoming freshman sa college, grab niya na kasi sayang at hindi na siya mauulit-ulit sa med school or other, ano, uh, other time ng buhay niyo. So, yeah, sayang. It only comes once and yung memories nyo learnings for a lifetime runs fair. Okay. Next slide, please. So, yun niya. Ito na nga. Ay, hindi in-update yung picture. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, ayan. Um, little did I know, no? Yung mga little things na ginagawa ko, for example, yung pagiging faithful sa mga quizzes ko, um, pagiging active sa org, nag-sum up siya, not knowingly. Nagbunga siya in a way na I didn't expect. Actually kasi, um, yung left picture, yan yung panahon na kakuha ako ng mga awards sa sinabi ni Sir Josh kanina. Tapos yung nasa gitna, yan yung picture nung nag-present kami sa, ano, di ba yung research ko kanina? Pinresent namin siya sa ano, Nas- National Research Council of the Philippines. So, um, nandyan yung mga matatandang um, bihasa sa research. Tapos pinresent namin yung research sa kanila. And also, since medyo umuok yung grades ko, naging, nag-participate ako sa iba't ibang quiz bees, and sobrang nagbunga siya. So, ano ba yung point ko when I'm saying all of these achievements, no? So, actually, uh, the secret lang talaga is enjoying what you're doing. Kasi, marirealize mo na lang talaga bigla na pag na ginaling, ginalingan mo na pala na kasi parang ako kasi, sabi ko, sa mga maliliit na bagay gagalingan ko, susulitin ko, ganyan. And it and indeed, it came a long way. So, sabi nga nila, you will reap what you sow. Kung baga, kung anong in-invest mo, kahit gano'ng kaliit man yan, magubunga at magubunga siya, unknowingly. So, I know you guys can do better kasi you have all the resources in the world. So, utilize nyo lang kasi kung ako, nagawa ko, kayo, I know you can do better. 
So yeah, ano lang, tiwala lang sa sarili nyo at enjoy most importantly. Okay? So next, please. Ayan. So as you remember kanina, no, yung tatlong things to um, in reaching your goals or your dreams. No? Number one is to dream big. Number two, aning number two? Number two is to set goals. And number three is to take action. So initially, when I joined college or when I entered college, yun yung, yung naging goal ko is to have an, a high-end math score and to have good, good grades yung college hanggat sa kaya ko. And indeed, nangyari naman siya kasi yung uh, yung end math score na nakuha ko is um, sobrang sakto siya for the school that I'm targeting and also nakuha um very nag naging worth it yung pagpupuyat ko kasi um na, na-aim ko yung grades na gusto kong makuha and most importantly siguro yung pinaka hindi ko ina-expect is yung ma-acknowledge ka nationally as one of the outstanding students ko no parang diba it's really um parang napaka-impossible mangyari kasi parang ikaw bulakbol ka lang nung high school tapos pumaparty ka lang naman ng college pero napansin ka ng ano madlang tao so yeah ang ano ko lang talaga ang advice ko talaga if there is one thing that i want you guys to remember is to really dream dream big to set goals and to take action and most importantly because of my goals nakapasok ako sa dream college ko without paying any cent as in hanggang ngayon mag third year na ako um wala pa akong wala wala akong nilabas ni piso nung ano med school so yeah possible siya guys kung feeling mo um hindi ka matalino or feeling mo wala kang pag-asa sa buhay or something like that that keeps you down don't worry kasi laging may paraan at laging may patutunguhan pag kumuha ka ng paraan Okay, next slide, please. So, so, summing up my college years, no, it will never be easy talaga. Kasi sobrang daming scientific terms, sobrang daming ano, um, susulatin, ang dami mong pagdadaan ng pagsubok outside and inside akal. So, pwedeng may jowa ka, mag-break kayo, yung sakit, ang sakit-sakit nun, di ba? So, yun. Or pwedeng... Um, may family problem kayo in between or another financial problem. So, in short, it will never be easy. Wala namang shortcut sa buhay. Pero, kapit lang. Kasi, magiging worth it yan. So, yung mga maliliit na steps, galingin nyo dun. Kasi, magbubunga at magbubunga siya. Next, please. So, ngayon, I can actually say that I'm on to another goal. Kasi dati yung goal ko lang is to enter med school. Ngayon, nandito na ako, halfway there. And kung kinaya ko, I know you can do it too. Hindi um, ko man kayo kilala personally, but uh, uh, malaki yung paniniwala ko sa inyo. Kasi you're not here by accident. You're here because someone believes in you. And I believe in you. Alright, next. Ayan. So, um, kung titingnan nyo yung last, yung sa left picture, that's me on the first day of med school. And sa right, that's me on the second day of med school. Natutulog. <laughs> so, yeah. Normal pa rin yan. Ako, honestly, lagi akong tulog sa klase. Pero, so normal. ano? Ano, ano? So, normal pa lang tinutulogan nila ako sa gym meet. Oh my gosh. <laughs> 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 oh, ako din eh. <laughs> Ayun, pero what what's the point here? Yung point lang naman dito na gusto kong i-share sa inyo is mapapagod ka. Mafrustrate ka even up until now, nafrustrate ako, napakahirap. Pero ituloy mo lang. Kasi minsan babagsak ka talaga sa buhay. Pero okay lang kasi makakabangon ka. Um, kung tatanungin niyo ako, no, sobrang hirap yung med. Pero now that nasa third year na ako, unti-unti na lang, two years, three years, sobrang parang kumbaga natatanong mo na, titigil pa ba ako? And same goes for you. Feeling yung malayo pa, pero sobrang bilis lang yan. So, 
yun. Actually, hindi ako mag-aano ngayon ng magidig deep into med- medicine and how to survive medicine kasi it's a different topic on its own. Baka tulugan niyo ako in return pag nag-share pa ako dyan. Pero ang masasabi ko lang, it's different from college. Really different from college. Pero ano siya? It's really gonna be fulfilling. Next. Next, please. Ayan. So, going back, no? Yung nasa picture sa left, that was me six years ago. Exactly nasa position nyo ngayon. Kaya lang yung difference sa harapan nyo yung computer. Ako nasa, ano ako, nasa madla lang. Nagbe-blend in. Hindi ako nag-stand out. Pero ngayon, nandito na ako sa isa sa mga goal na sinet ko sa sarili ko. And yun lang, tuloy lang. Hindi ako titikil. And for sure, sana kayo din. And, ba diba, in a short amount of time, five years, six years, Sobrang daming mararating. Well, in my case, nag-level up lang yung goal ko. Kasi yung dating goal ko lang makapasok ng med school. Tapos ngayon, yung goal ko is makapasa ng med school, makapasa ng boards. One step at a time. Pero, lagi yung tatandaan at lagi ko din remind sa sarili ko na yung dream laging nandyan. Mag-iba man yung goals mo in life, nag-level up man yan, pero yung dream na meron ako nung 13 years old ako, nandyan pa rin siya. Alright, next. Okay, so going back to the topic, no? Kasi yun yung theme natin today, eh. Learning without limits in STEM. So, ibig sabihin dito, nandito ka para i-prove mo sa sarili mo na walang limitasyon para sa mga taong nangarap at nagsusumikap. At sa second line, no? Or sa third line, going beyond the stereotypes. Going beyond the stereotypes kasi kung gusto mo, gusto mo man maging medicine, medical student or kahit ano mang profession yan, engineering, arts, media, ang mga pangarap or yung mga gusto mo maging, hindi lang yan para sa mga mayayaman at matatalino, kundi para din yan sa mga nagsusumikap. Tulad ko, tulad nyo. Next. So yeah, lagi yung tatandaan, if you want to go far ahead in life, remember three things. Three things. Dream big, set goals, and take action. Padayon, tuloy lang. At nandito ako five years, ten years from now, aabangan ko yung mga susunod na mga, na mga magiging doktor dito or mga professional at yun, masasabi ko na yung talk na to magiging worth it. So yeah, I believe in you guys. Maraming salamat for taking time para sa mga gising pa. Maraming salamat. I really appreciate it. So yeah, tuloy lang. Laban. Next please. Okay. Yan. Yan. Ngayon, babalik ulit natin sa main topic natin, sir, no? Ito na yung last slide, sir. Mm-hmm. Okay. So basically, this is the... Sorry, pumiyok na tuloy. Pagod na. <laughs> so padayon, dear STEM students. Gano'n kahirap ang sitwasyon? Gano'n man kahirap yung tingin nyo para ma-reach yung goal nyo? You can do it. Gaya ng paulit-ulit nating sinasabi. Now, the, the floor is now open for question and answer with Sir Toby. Um, I'm only allowed to entertain around 10 questions pero the rest of your questions siguro what kasi we have a timetable to follow may isa pa tayong speaker so what i'm going to do na lang is ka- kindly uh do may ginawa akong facebook group for all the great of stem students kindly post your questions or comment your questions on my post tapos i-compile ko yung questions na yon and we'll post a general answer there okay so sige You can now comment down your questions. Actually, sir, may nakita ko kanina magandang tanong. Ano daw? Sige paano lang. ka daw po nagre-review? Anong study habits mo, sir? Na baka sakaling ma- maging helpful din sa kanila. What works hmm. best for you? Actually, sige, college muna tayo. Kasi med school is a different thing. Mag-iiba talaga yung ano, study habits. So, college muna. 
Okay, so nung college kasi, um, ginagawa ko, nagna-notes ako ng maigi. Kumbaga, ano, it starts with your note-taking skills. Kumbaga, lahat ng, kung lahat ng kayang sabihin ng prof, i-take down mo. As in, make sure that you won't miss anything. Or kung kaya mong i-record, record mo. Basta makuha mo lahat ng sasabihin. And when it comes to studying, actually, ano eh, um, puyat, ako, late night person talaga ako. And honestly, pag, kuwari kasi, nung CEO kasi, nag, LRT lang ako pa uwi. So, LRT pa lang, binubuksan ko na notes ko. Nag, uh, babasa na ako in advance. Tapos, ayun lang, more on memorizing kasi, it's more on understanding talaga. And, yun eh, wala talagang secret kundi i-ano mo talaga. Pagtsagaan mo talaga, magkape ka, magpuyat ka, wag ka matulog, basta make sure na naintindihan mo lahat. And, yun, really hard work. Walang secret dun eh. Kasi yung mo talaga. Okay. Next question, sir. May nagtanong dito. Um, ga- gaano po kalala yung memorization na naranasan nyo nung college? Um, paano ba? <laughs> Kasi, kasi ang common, ano kasi nila, sirs? Ang common mm-hmm. misconception nila in biology is pag bio, memorize. Kapag chem at physics, laging mag-analyze. Pero yun yung sana binrate ko sana sa kanilang stereotypes nung nagsimula ang gen bio. And it's not all about memorization. Kasi pansin mo, yung quiz mo kanina, somewhat ap- application na siya eh. Hindi lang siya definition of terms eh, diba? So, mm-hmm. ayun, sir, pa- paano, na- paano daw yung pag-memorize nun sa- para sa inyo? Actually, um, to be honest, ha, mas marami pang kinakabisado yung mga medtech at pharma. Totoo. Nakita ko, yeah. nasaksihan ko yung ano nila. Especially mm-hmm. sa pharmacy, meron doon subject nila toxicology, parasitology, etc. So, mm-hmm. sige, ganito na lang. Uh, uh, magdadag isisingit ko sa bio, class per class, I will be talking about the different medical professions na lang na pwede yung pasukin. Okay? Mm-hmm. Ganun na lang. Para, kasi kung sasagutin yung Sir Toby yun, ako, <laughs> mahaba-habang diskusyon to. Okay? Eto, Sir, naniniwala po ba kayo sa kasabihang grades are just a number? Gr- number naman talaga ang grades. <laughs> oh, actually, totoo naman. Pero, well, But, Honestly well, sige, speaking, sir. No, grades is just a number, yes. Pero kasi hindi talaga natin may iwasan na yun yung magiging basis ng mga companies or med schools at first, ba? Diba? Kasi parang grades is just a number, yes. Pero it somehow reflects kasi what you are as a student. I mean, technically as a student. Kasi students kasi, ba? Diba? Exams, grades. Yes, it is a number, it defines you at first, but it doesn't define you wholly as a person. So, if feeling mo mababa grades mo, okay lang. Pero at least, do your best, do your part as a student, not as a person. Okay? So, apart from life kasi, student, studyante ka pa rin. So, at least do your part para whatever definition they give to you, as long as alam mo binigay mo yung best mo, okay na yun. Ayun. Ito, sir. Ano pong mga possible jobs pag nagtapos po ng BS Biology? Actually, maganda yung ano, opportunities ng bio sa research. Or, uh, yeah, research, uh, academe, med, or may iba. Actually, to be honest, ha, um, dito sa Philippines, very limited yung trabaho ng bio. Pero when you go abroad, kuwari sa Australia, nagmarine bio ka, Nako dai yung ano mo yung uh, sweldo mo it's more 200,000 a month yan daig mo pa yung doctor dito so it really depends on you and how you want to explore the world kumbaga kasi when you're a bio it kind of gives you a ticket sa iba't ibang research opportunities abroad so yeah maraming maraming opportunities pero ano lang don't limit yourself sa Philippines kasi mal, ma, narrow lang yan kung dito ka lang titingnan. Next question, sir. Ano po yung... Uh, Ella, nabanggit na kanina ang pre-med niya, IBS Bio. Ngayon, ano daw ang pinaka nire-recommend mong pre-med? Actually, et, si sir, any insights regarding sa re- pagre-recommend ng best pre-med daw or magandang pre-med? Actually, um, the best pre-med 
is the degree na mag enjoy ka the most and at the same time, makakakuha ka ng mataas na grades. Actually, ano eh, hindi mo pwedeng maraming options kung kumbaga, pwede ka mag medtech pharma, psych, bio, or oh, nursing. Even, sabi Uh-oh. ko nga kanina. Pero it really depends on you kung mag enjoy ka ba talaga sa aralin mo. Kasi kung hindi ka din mag enjoy para saan pa? Kasi if you're not enjoying what you're studying, araw-araw magsisisi ka, araw-araw feeling mo pabigat lang siya. In return, hindi ka magkakaroon ng mataas sa grades. So, the very least you can do is find the course that you will enjoy. You will have find you will um f- parang makikita mo na may enjoy mo yung sarili mo talaga habang inaaral siya. And kasi pag love mo yung ginagawa mo, magpapakita yun sa grades mo. So, and grades is an important um factor if you want to go into the top med schools. Pero okay lang naman kahit any med school. Pero if you want to have that like extra edge about above the others, go for a course that will give you high grades but something that you will enjoy at or in. Ayun. Uh, may question si Yula kanina. MD to MBA. Ano daw meaning na MBA, Sir Toby? Ba- hindi ko pala nasama sa profile mo yun kanina. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Um, kasi yung Ateneo kasi, dual degree kasi yung offer niya. Hindi lang MD, kundi MBA. MBA is Masters of Business Administration. So, sobrang naging bonus na lang din siya sa akin. Kasi, apart from studying med, you learn how to be managers at your own hospitals. Kasi sa mga directors, kasi hospital directors, required ng MBA. Eh, they usually take it after med school pa. While kami, they give it during med school. So, parang it saves you time and it gives you another perspective. Parang nag-med ka, may med subjects ka kahapon, tapos today, meron kang financial subjects, may accounting ka. So, kung gusto nyo ng med and financial stuff, mag kayo. <laughs> Ayun. So, last question. Sorry, I'm sorry we don't have any more time. Pero last question natin. Ano po yung tingin yung... E- edge ng pre-med nyo pagdating sa NMAT compared to other pre-med po? Uh, okay. Actually kasi, yung NMAT mo is composed of different subjects, no? M- meron siyang two parts. Yung first part is yung mga ano, logic part, so wal- di- walang kinalaman yung courses doon. And yung second part kasi is composed of four subjects. Biology, physics, chemistry, and social science. So, merong four components na scientific sa NMAT. So, basically, pag bio ka, advantage mo yung bio. So, hindi ka na masyado mag-aaral. Aaralin mo na lang yung tatlong natitira. Kung, gusto, gusto, kung physics major ka, edi yung the other three. Or kung chem major ka, the other three. Pero, um, yun yung magiging edge mo. Familiar ka na sa mga bio terms, chem terms, kasi may subjects ka ng college. But, if at the same time, kaya pa rin siya aralin regardless. So, I have classmates na ano hindi nag-review at all pero ang baba-baba ng NMAT kahit bio major siya. Tapos meron akong kilalang hindi siya med subject, ano siya, finance, finance yung course niya ng college pero naka 90 plus sa NMAT. So at the end of the day it boils down to how you study pa rin and how you take things not for granted. Okay, so thank you, thank you again, Sir Toby. Ay, wait lang, may gusto lang ako i-clarify, no? Baka, Sir, may madagdag ka dito sa insight ko. Uh, may nagtanong kasi, from arts do ba, pwede do ba mag-med school? Yes po, provided you have to take the necessary subjects or units na kailangan para makapag-medicine ka. Tama po ba yun, Sir? Or do they need to get another degree pa? Or yung units lang ba kailangan? Actually, some schools, they don't require na parang as long as you get the NMAT score that they wanted at yung grades, yung GWA na kailangan. Pero, yung mga top schools, if you're aiming for that, they usually require nga, like yung sabi mo kanina, yung mga additional units, kasi technically, kailangan mo din naman yun at hindi ka mahihirapan. I mean, medyo magiging familiar ka, but yeah, ito yung point ko ha. Regardless of kung anong course, arts ka, bio, medtech, pagdating mo ng first year med school, lahat kayo bobo. <laughs> <laughs> Lahat kayo Honestly, ba- back, to, yeah. back to zero. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, ayun. So, thank you, thank you for your time, Sir Toby. Actually, na sobrang nag-enjoy. Nakita kita ko nag-enjoy yung mga bata. So, if ever you're free again, so we would like to invite you again sa PLMAR, especially na 
yung mga bata magtatapos na ng study nila sa grade 12. Oh. Unti na lang guys, graduation na. Actually, ang lesson na lang natin sa bio is for good for three weeks. So, again, thank you, Sir Toby. We would like to give you our warmest appreciation for your time and effort sa pag-talk para sa ating mga dear students. Charles? Yes po, Sir. Uh, thank, you po sa, thank you po, Sir, sa pag-share sa amin ng dagdag na knowledge about Sibayo. And uh, thank you po sa pag-encourage sa amin na magpatuloy uh, in this uh, field na sinabi niyo po. So, ayun po. Thank you po sa mga grade 12. And Sir Josh? Okay, so again, also dear students, thank you, thank you for your time and effort as well to attend this webinar. Now, don't go yet. Right after this, ikoklose ka na tong, um stream na to. We, Charles and I will open another stream para naman sa talk about physics. Okay? Yes. So again, thank you again, Sir Toby. Thank you, Charles. And thank you, my dear students, for attending. Have a nice day, everyone. Thank you, Paul.